Okay, so hello everybody. I am uh, Dimitri Fontaine from France, and uh, we're going to talk about backups. And actually, we're going to be speaking about why backups are not interesting. <laughs> Let's get back to that, to that in a minute. So I'm currently working uh, at a place, a French place called uh, Le Bon Coin, which is doing uh, classified ads. And I've been a major contributor of, for PostgreSQL uh, for some time now. The current project uh, that I spend my free time hacking on currently is a PG Loader. The goal of PG Loader is to be able to load data into PostgreSQL as fast as possible. And uh, the trick that doesn't uh, show in the name of it is that it, it will, uh, for example, load data from a MySQL database. It will connect to MySQL, um, introspect the schema by doing catalog queries, recreate the, an equivalent schema in PostgreSQL, including uh, data type conversion. For example, tiny int of one might actually be a Boolean, so it will care, take care of that. Does the rule data loading, and then recreate all the indexes, the constraint, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So you can do a full-blown MySQL to PostgreSQL migration in one command line. And it works also with uh, SQL Server, SQLite, and CSV, DBase, uh, plenty of things. So check it out if you have a use case for it. Would you run paid ads? Yes, sponsor me and I do that. Okay. <laughs> uh, I'm serious. I, I'm not going to touch Oracle uh, on my free time. Uh, that will never going to happen. But I really want PG Loader to have Oracle support. So let's talk about it. I'm serious. So I've been doing other uh, stuff for PostgreSQL. Uh, if you're using Debian, check out apt.postgresql.org. Uh, Debian has a policy that is really good, but uh, that works against PostgreSQL in this time, which is that they really want uh, to be able to maintain the software, whatever happens. So they on the hook to fixing the bugs which means that they don't want to include all currently supported PostgreSQL releases. And in Debian, Debian stable, that doesn't mean the software distributed by Debian is stable. It, it does mean that the version number of a, every software doesn't change during the lifetime of the distribution. So it's not the software that is stable, it's the couple software name, version number. So if they, are, if they have PostgreSQL 9.1, they will not have 9.2, 9.3, etc. They only have one version. If you want to have a stable PostgreSQL release on a Debian stable distribution, and if you want to, to, to um, have the opportunity to choose whichever of the five currently stable PostgreSQL releases you want to work with, check out apt.postgresql.org. Okay, so as I said, backups are not interested, interesting at all. So who is running PostgreSQL in production? Yeah, who's doing backups? Who's doing automated tested recovery? The other ones, you don't have backups. <laughs> End of story. That's it. If you don't test the backup, the only way you know you have a backup is that you are able to restore it. Okay, there is no use case for a backup other than recovering. If you don't try to recover a backup, you don't know if you have a backup. If you don't know if you have a backup, well, you don't have a backup. That's it. So that's my full talk. <laughs> So <laughs> backups are used in general because you want to be sure that whatever happens, you still have access to the data. So that's uh, the disaster recovery plan. When everything, every other things are failing, all one after the other, then it's time to recover a backup. And if you didn't, if you don't have automated tested um, of the backups, so the recovery actually, well, the day you really need them, you don't have a procedure, you don't have a script that does it automatically, you don't have people trained to do it, so you're discovering how to, risk to recover a backup for the first time, and you're in that situation. That's not good. Nobody wants to be there, so don't be there. So the, my advice is that never task people to do backups, because they will do, ba they will do backups, and they will stop there. And that's not what you want. There is no business that just wants backups. So task, task people to do automated recovery each and every day, week, whatever is, um, makes sense for you. So for example, you do physical backups each and every night. Let's get that as an example. And how do you test 
your physical backup. Well, you copy it over to a box where you start PostgreSQL, and PostgreSQL should be happy to start with uh, whatever files were in the physical backup, right? And then you PG dump out of that standby that you just bring done from the backup, and PG dump will read every piece of data into PostgreSQL. So it will actually test that you can read all the data that is part of the backup. And bonus, you will have a physical backup and a logical backup, and the logical backup is not hammering any resource on your production server. So just do that. Physical backup, fully automated, and then you restore that, you PG dump out of it, and if you really want to be sure, you also vacuum the whole thing, because PG dump will not use the indexes, and maybe you want to test that you can actually read data from the indexes. So you can also vacuum at a standby, you just bring it out from the backup. So you don't do backups, you do automated recovery testing. And one of the good tools that you can use to be able to do that is Barman. So why Barman? Barman is the only tool I know of. I need to check about PG Backrest about that, but David will tell me. Up to now, <laughs> Barman has been the only tool that I know of that explains. The first thing he says, Barman is not a backup tool. Barman is a disaster recovery tool, okay? The aim of Barman is to recover data. The guys who wrote the software, what they want to be able to do is recover data. That's what you want. Backrest, you have that too. It's all about the recovery. Okay, so you can use either Barman or Backrest. The other ones, each time they're talking only about the backups. We're really good at doing backups. Yeah, nobody cares, whatever. So I'm not really sure I uh, succeeded into convincing you to change your, all your backup organization and procedures, et cetera. So let's, let's talk about a story that did happen when uh, I was called in the early morning to help fix a customer who had a problem with uh, their backups because uh, they never tested it. So they did not have any backups, and still they lost data in production. So let's see what happens when you lost your data in production, you have no standby, and you have no backups. What's next? <laughs> you can close the door, yeah. Find a new job, I don't know, something. So the, oh, that, that's another favorite of mine. We, we do have backup, uh, we have written a shell script. <laughs> what can I say? Never use shell in production ever. In production, the, the only th important thing you want to be able to do is recover from any error that you didn't think about. So you, you need to use a tool that allows you to implement error uh, handling. How do you handle errors in a bash script? Well, you don't. So don't use, don't use bash in production, that's it. Use some, whatever you want to, but you need to be able to handle non-anticipated errors. That's production, that will happen, and it needs to be graceful, as, as graceful as possible. There is no way to do it correctly in a shell script. So if you have shell scripts in production, rewrite them in something else. Uh, maybe not, not just now, but tomorrow. <laughs> I'm quite serious about that. Each time there is a, a huge fuck up in production, there is a shell script somewhere. So in that case, the shell script was all about uh, caring for the backups. So it was the backup script. The first thing they did, obviously, is to make sure you have enough space on the device to actually make a backup. So the first thing you do is you remove the old backups that are still uh, laying around. So every file that is older than five days gets removed. And of course, the, this is a cron job that runs as the Postgres user on the, on the machine. I think you're, you're seeing it coming, but let's spell it out nonetheless. And um, they were under pressure to deliver the, this system, so they didn't do all the checks that the setup was entirely correct, and they forgot to include the environment that contains the backup deer. So what happens? That directory doesn't exist. Yeah. So 
that actually will happen in the currently working directory. And if you're in the Chrome context as Postgres user, that's PG data. So let's remove any file older than five days in PG data. And then we'll take a backup. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay. Who's running backups from the shell script in production? Yeah, change that. Yeah. <laughs> Don't do it anymore. <laughs> okay. So if you can spell data loss, that's what happened. So let's see about what to do now. Don't, don't, don't do it, yeah, don't try to do it. So they did have some work archiving, but they didn't have a pass backup that matches the whole stream because the, the pass backup was supposed to be taken by the, the shell script. But the whole archive, it was the archive command in the postgresql.conf that, that was deployed. The, the environment, no, but that, that part, yes. So we, we were like, okay, so let's try and uh, use those wall files that are beginning at the, just the, the beginning of the server. We don't have a bus backup, but, but when you start your server for the first time, you just did an init DB, it's here, init DB, and then you start. So any server on the same physical architecture begins all the same every time. It always begins as a, like the result of the init DB command from the same version of PostgreSQL. So we did that. And we tried to apply the wall with the restore command to the resulting cluster, the, like the, the, the bare default cluster. But of course, the wall files contain the system identifier that is randomly generated each time you do in DB, so it didn't match. Okay, let, let's see in the wall what is that number, that magic number, and replace it into the, uh, replace in the, in the current in DB system, change the system number with that. So this, the system number was this one that I will not even try to read. And it's written that way in, uh, it needs to be written in hexadecimal, of course, because it, it wouldn't be fun otherwise. And uh, network byte order, which means that you begin by the end. And so with a exedit pg control file, to put that into place at the right offset in the file, don't mess it up. But it's in the new initDB cluster, so we, if we mess it up, we don't lose any data. We do initDB again and try again. So we do that, and then we try again to apply the whole files. And this time, we have no uh, system identifier error, so it means that we, we managed to bring in the, the, the correct identifier. But of course, the procedure to install a new server will first do the initDB, and then change the setup to include the whole files, and then start again the server. So we're missing the first wall file, the first two of them actually. So there is no way we can invent them, no luck. So we couldn't apply the wall files we had. We were missing the first ones. If we had a base backup, we would have been able to use them. We didn't have a base backup. And there was no way to reconnect with the, 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 the init DB sequence. So too bad. What's next? So just, just to be sure, show of hand, who wants to do that in production where any other hope is lost? You don't have any data left. The data is really important. That, that was financial transactions. For it, I'm serious. <laughs> so they really wanted to recover the data. They have nothing left. And we're doing that in production with every manager having pressure in his head because they lost the financial data to report to the customer and invoice the customer. So who wants to be doing that in production? Yeah, do your backups. <laughs> Test your recovery. Do the recovery, yeah. So, but we don't have the, the data yet, so we continued. So we're going to act on whatever is left from the uh, 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 RM-RF that we did before. So what's ever left, we're going to act on that and try to have PostgreSQL be able to start with uh, something. So first, make a copy don't destroy it again. We're going to hack and we're going to do bad things on the data. So whatever left, we work on a copy. That, 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 that's obvious, but given that the backup script failed and removed the production data, maybe, they, maybe we need to state the obvious. 
So when we start PostgreSQL against the, a copy of this data set, well, there is no PG file, not that map file. So in PostgreSQL, when you create a relation, like a table, an index, a sequence, lots of things, uh, it will be assigned an, um, a numeric name, that is the name of the file on disk, and which might be the same as the internal identifier, or maybe not. So there is a mapping in between the internal PostgreSQL identifiers, the OIDs of the catalog table. There's a mapping in between that and the name of the file on the file system. So that's the map of the file nodes for PostgreSQL, PG file node, which we didn't have, so we recreated it with uh, that magic command. Yeah, so I, I, had, I had some help to figure that out. Uh, it was uh, Andres friend, I asked him, and he was like, oh, that's easy, you just do that and you have one. You can play with it. Okay, let's try that, it worked. Next problem. So now we have a PG file not .map file, and PostgreSQL refuses to start nonetheless because it's missing some uh, clock files. So the C log, okay, so it finishes with the log. So some people, when they're short of space on the, some directory, and they're like, okay, let's remove some useless files. Oh, there is a whole bunch of log files that are written in binary and uh, that nobody can do anything with it. Let's remove that. It's taking lots of places on disk. So it might happen to, to you even, yeah, it, it, it happens. So there is log in the name, but don't remove, don't ever remove that. Uh, the C log is um, uh, the state of each transaction on disk. It will tell you for each transaction number, XID, if it did commit or rollback. Which means if you don't have that file, you don't know if the data is visible or not. So at this step, we're going to hack the, the file, create them again, and uh, the, so there is two bits per transaction. So you have uh, three different states possible, and uh, the zero one state means visible. So we're going to hack the, the C log files, create them again, uh, and placing the big U here means uh, zero one because we have uh, four transactions visible, if you say big U. And so we are creating uh, the, the missing C log files and we are pretending that every reference transactions in those files were committed and not rollbacked. But we don't know that, we don't know that. Maybe some of them had a rollback and so we are going to make data visible that was not visible. So at the end of the story, we get some data back to the analysts and they're like, yeah, but that transaction, I'm not sure it did happen. Yeah, maybe not, because we, we did that. We don't know. <coughs> so we needed to do that for PostgreSQL to start, but we are, we're not lying about the, any data that we may recover. No, PostgreSQL is starting. So it starts, it's great. So you connect to it, and uh, no, you cannot connect to it. Because uh, the first thing it says, it, there is no PG database file. Okay, so let's create one. What is a PG database file? So we need to be another cluster on the side and we connect to it and uh, have a look at PG database and here is what it looks like. So remember about the file node mapping that we had before? So we need another mapping for the database entries. And because it's a shared um, catalog, it needs to be there, what, whatever the database you want to connect to. It, this file exists for the whole cluster, so it doesn't depend on the database, so you need to have it to be able to connect. To check that you, when you connect, PostgreSQL needs to check that the database you want to connect to exists, and it does that in that file, and that file was older than five days, <laughs> so it's been lost by our backup script, okay? <laughs> Just so that we are on the same page. Um, so if we try to figure out that binary content of the file, we can see that you, you recognize the strings here, right? That's the names of the database. So let's create a file with the mapping we need. So we, we, we can't inject anything in the, in the cluster because there is no way we can start the cluster. So what we did is uh, hack PostgreSQL source code so that we, we would have a with IDs com, uh, option for create database 
So now with that command in the server, we are able to create a database and specify the, uh, the target OID we want. Because we had the, we had the files, so each, uh, each database here is mapped to a directory that lives into um, base in, inside the main cluster. Those files, those directory entries still existed and the um, name of the file is all numeric and that is the number we want here inside. So the, the content here, the, the relation file node entry, we, are, we, know the, we know that data, it's, you just ls in the base directory and you have the, the, the numbers. And we found the script that they used in the shell history, I'm, I'm not even kidding. So in the shell history of the box where they, they lost all the data, we could find in which order they created the database, like when they put the box in production days ago. And so we could map, because it's an increasing sequence, so we knew which number would be which database. <laughs> okay, so now we, with that command, we could log, in, log into, so we could uh, create a new cluster, hacked with a new command, and create the database in the same order again, and pick the OIDs from the LS of the damaged cluster. And when we have that, we can copy over the file with the mapping, and now we can actually connect to PostgreSQL. Yeah, but <laughs> it's not done yet. <laughs> so just as a quick reminder, either you do that or you have proper backups that you test, okay? <laughs> but let's have fun some more. So now we want to connect to a database and uh, well, I, I was not at ease at, at this time because as the consultant uh, to help them, I, I read an error message that I didn't know existed. I had to open the code of PostgreSQL again and try to find it. <laughs> and try to understand what it is. So, who has seen that error message before? <laughs> Peter, maybe, but no, not even you. So, what does it mean? Well, the, the, the PG database file, the, so, so the mapping in between the, the numbers and the name of the databases, PostgreSQL has that now. So it, it can open the file, it's happy, so it can start. But when it, when it tries to use it, the, so the, as it's a shared, catalog, it's indexed, because uh, you need that pretty often. So PostgreSQL will actually read the data from the index, not from the file. So we created the file with the right mapping, but it will not use it anyway. But PostgreSQL uh, hackers are really, really, really good about that. So of course, you can start a PostgreSQL cluster, and uh, with this option, tells the PostgreSQL cluster, please, refrain from using any system catalog index. And every PostgreSQL feature will continue to work, just disabling the indexes, the system catalog indexes, because of course you're going to have problems with that and the hackers did know about that, so there is a mechanism that allows you to fix the system catalogs. You can re-index them and whatever. So the, 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 the full thing is, once you started, you don't want the what we want to obtain from, the, from this scenario is whatever data is still available in the damaged cluster. We don't care about doing anything. So we disable all the index usage for later and we disable the system catalog indexes. We reload with the new config and not only PostgreSQL starts, but we can connect to it now. So is there any data in there? First thing we do when we connect, of course, is uh, please PostgreSQL list me the tables that you do have. And it's like, oh, I would like to, but I'm missing that file. And uh, in the uh, fresh cluster that we did uh, in EDB on the side, we see that the file exists and uh, it's pgproc. So each time you create a, data, a database, a series of files are created, always the same with the same OIDs extra. So the OID and the PG relation file node here are always the same if you do an NDB again. For the same version of PostgreSQL, it's always the same numbers. So we're missing here PGProc. And when you do backslash DT to, list the, to have the list of the tables, the query that is used to do that actually uses some functions, stored procedures. So you cannot list the tables because you, you have lost all the stored procedures. 
but th they, are, they are available in the binary of the PostgreSQL cluster. So the binary has them, but they are not available in the, in the PostgreSQL catalogs. So they're not available at the SQL level. So well, we copy the file over, the pgproc file directly. We copy it over from the fresh in DB system to the damage cluster. And uh, they, we were really lucky on that recovery scenario. They didn't use any stored procedures. So when we do that, we just install all these standard stored procedures from PostgreSQL, but none of the user-defined one. But they didn't have any, so it's OK. So we do that. While PostgreSQL is running, we copy over the pgproc file, and we try the command again, and it works. So that's pre pretty amazing. But now it complains about schemas. So let's continue to dive into that. It's either that or you have backups, you know, so. <laughs> so the, here is what the namespace is. So it, it looks like that. So it's the list of the schemas that, uh, that you have. So they, uh, again, they, they only have a couple, maybe three schemas, and they uh, did remember about them, which order extra. And actually, we, don't, we didn't really care. We, we could have renamed them whatever we wanted. But there is a trick. They don't have the PG namespace file, but they, uh, so here is what it looks like if you copy it out from a working system. So the goal is to create a new file that looks like that and copy it over the damage cluster. So we copy pg namespace <coughs> from standard input with OIDs and we say, okay, we had an error message that this OID was unknown as a namespace. Well, it's my namespace now and it, it, I own it and it has no special privileges and you can you can actually do that on a running cluster and uh, where are the numbers coming from well we, we we still have we were really lucky we still have pg class basically they did create maybe a temporary table or something in pg class in the last five days so the so the backup script that removes anything older than five days didn't get to remove that one but they <laughs> pairing a create table command in the last five days, we wouldn't have a PG class <laughs> to work with. So we were really lucky. And um, so in PG class, we have the rel namespace. That is the OID of the namespace, which is used as a, a foreign key. So of course, if we, we need to do a left join because the namespace entries are empty. But we know the rel namespace, and uh, we know the name of the table, and they're like, oh, this table is part of this schema. So here is the proper name of the schema. OK, so then we can prepare the command here and uh, inject our namespaces so that PostgreSQL works again. And again, we do that live. So we do that copy command live into a broken cluster, and we get to the next stage. It's pretty amazing. We can query the catalogs. But wh what we want, actually, is not the catalog entries. We, we want to recover whatever data is still available, right? And so we have PG attributes. So again, maybe they did create a table in the past five days. So we still have PG class, and we still have PG attributes. And uh, PG attributes, it's a good thing we have that, because it's one of the mo most complex to uh, recreate from scratch. So we didn't have to do that. We have PG attribute, but we don't have the catalog uh, with the attribute uh, defaults value. So here is what it looks like, the default values. And there, if you look at the catalogs, so you have one row per attribute with an attribute uh, which is a uh, add name. So it's the list of columns with uh, the first column number one, second column number two extra. And in the attr def table, we have the default value expression. So now we need to step back a little. And so the goal is to recover any data. We, we're not going to insert new data into the damage cluster image, right? So we, do we care about default values? No, we don't. We just want whatever is in there. We, we're not going to invent new default values. So let's pretend that there is no default value. We have, uh, in PG attributes, we have uh, attity has default, which is a column that allows PostgreSQL to know if it needs to go fetch the default value when you do an insert without the value. And uh, so let's update that and say, no, no, it, there is no default. So don't care about that. 
Okay, so we, we don't need to fix that catalog that is missing. We just pretend that nobody has a default value, please. Okay, and then after that, we are able to copy the data over to CSV files. So we, we could actually recover some data from that. And remember about the, the C log slide? We could recover data, but we don't know if the data we recovered had ever been committed or not. No way around it. So two days later when we did that, then the guy complained, oh, you, 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 gave us, uh, you recovered some data that never existed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so as a conclusion, I, um, I, I was really, really impressed by uh, PostgreSQL um, resiliency here because I could start, we could hack our way into the, having the cluster start again. And then uh, while, the, the, um, while the thing is running, we could fix it. And with, uh, so the, if we back to the, if we back a minute to the, the PG Pro countries here. So we did, it, it was complaining about that file that is missing and it's PG Proc. But it actually, uh, I didn't copy paste the, the slide, but I, I could have copy pasted that like with dozen other catalogs that were missing too, like PGAM, the access uh, methods, uh, PG op families, PG op class, PG, anything that you will never modify in after, uh, modify after the create table. So uh, we lost any, fi any file older than five days. So that's the things you typically don't modify. So we lost all the, uh, all the core infrastructure of catalogs for PostgreSQL. So we did replace not only PGProc, but a dozen others. Uh, again, we were lucky they were not using extensions. If you create an extension, then you add new entries to, the, to those catalogs. And it's entries that the, the object identifiers, the ID, are going to be dynamic so that you don't know them. In that case, all the OIDs we have are created at initDB time and uh, those numbers are R coded into PostgreSQL source code. So from one installation to the other, it's always the same number. So we could pick all the files from a new system and copy them over. And we did that not only for PGProc, but for lots and lots and lots of other catalogs. So, and we did that while the server was running. So we type in the query, we have the new error message, we, fetch the f we copy the file over, we type the command again, and it's the next one. So I, I was pretty, uh, uh, I was really, really impressed. And at the end, so we get the data. And uh, some data, actually, not all of it, and uh, some data that we recovered didn't exist uh, in the production system, but they could do something, try to figure it out. I, I'm not even sure they lost the customer on that. <laughs> but that's another story. So, as a conclusion, who's doing backup in production? Who's having PostgreSQL in production? Like, lots of, yeah, all of you. Who's doing backups? Who's doing automated recovery testing? The other ones, you don't have backups. <laughs> Remember about that. And don't ever, ever write a shell script to run in production because you will have cases that are not handled properly. And you will, for example, remove any file older than five days in the wrong directory. So just don't do that. Use a proven tool like Barman or PG Backrest, something serious that is all about recovery, not backups. Nobody wants backups. We want recovery. Any question? Yes. Most of the things like uh, here, that was pretty fast. Right. Yeah. That thing, not so much. <laughs> <laughs> so it took two days. Okay. Yeah. Two days. Two days. Like 48 hours? Or? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I like to sleep at night. So, <laughs> so no, uh, maybe twice 10 hours, something like that. Let's say 20. 20 something hours, yeah. 
Yeah. Before I started. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sorry? <laughs> no, no, no. No, no. Over there and then you, yeah. The DBA in charge like called me on the phone over saying we really need you to come over now. Yes, he did. Okay. The others, not so much. <laughs> like the boss that was really crazy that some of the data didn't exist actually. Yeah. He didn't have a clue of what did happen. And the sysadmin guy and the DBA guys, they didn't really want to explain to him the failure of the backup script. So he didn't get a clue. Will? Uh, so I have a question about Spectrum Tech when the clip wasn't started. Were those Spectrum Tech audience or would that have been? Would Checksum have helped? I don't know. It's a, uh, uh, well, the file did, did disappear. So maybe it would have made f things, uh, no, it, I don't think it would have changed anything because we, we couldn't use the whatever wall files we had and the checksums are going to be in the wall files. We couldn't use that. So I think it, it wouldn't have helped at all, I think. But I don't want to do it again, just to be sure. <laughs> Good question, that must have been 9-1. Uh, no, on no, I don't, no, on that version, no, but yeah. if we had checksums, yeah. I don't think it would have changed anything. Yeah, I guess. Any other question? Thank you.